Hello and welcome, I'm called the Landscape Guy and today a tree has to be cut down. As always, I will show every step and explain exactly how I proceed. Cutting down big trees and using a chainsaw can be very dangerous. There are, as usual, different approaches and I want to show you how I have done this job successfully without the use of large equipment. It is currently mid-April and most of the trees are already sprouting. But not this 50 foot tall birch tree. I suppose that the last hot summer was one of the reasons for the death of this beautiful tree. You can see that the tree is dying from the already broken off branches and twigs. Here it is worth taking a closer look because the crown is very light and especially the remaining thin branches are not as flexible as a birch tree should be but rather dry and rigid. Birch trees especially become dry and rotten quickly after dying. Just half a year ago these branches still had leaves on them and last summer only a few branches were bare but now it is clear that the process of dying already begun at that time. The biggest problem with larger dead trees is danger of breakage. For instance larger branches can fall off rather quickly. Furthermore, it's impossible to know whether or not the whole tree could just topple over during the next storm. That wouldn't happen immediately because the roots are still present, but dead roots are far from being as flexible as in a tree that is full of sap. In short, a dead tree should be recognized and removed by the owner as soon as possible. Property owners can be held liable if they remain negligent to the potential danger and harm such a tree poses to the neighbors. This tree is located close to the property line between the two neighbors and there are other houses in the area. One could even say here that there is a case of imminent danger as dead branches have already fallen down. In such a case the tree can be felled at any time of the year. I think it's a pity to have to cut down this beautiful grown tree with its great light and dark pattern and beautiful moss growth. But safety first, so let's get started. First I have a close look at the crown and the form. It seems that the birch trunk has grown slightly towards the lawn. This is helpful because that's where I want to drop it. However, further up the crown leans to the other side towards the neighboring houses. It's very difficult to estimate this weight distribution and therefore we use a very long rope with which we will keep the tree under tension in the falling direction. The rope or belt is much longer than the tree is tall, so you don't put yourself in danger while pulling. Then I will cut a felling notch right about here. I use a small handy steel MS181C with only a 30 centimeter guard bar. Because I want to show you that you can easily cut down a tree that has a diameter thicker than 45 centimeters. I only use the steel Pico Duro chains because they are made of hardened steel and stay sharp much longer than other chains. I cut the upper fall notch on the side where the tree should fall. The cut runs to about the middle of the trunk. Now the lower cut and I make sure that it hits the upper cut at the end of both sides. Normally you make the notch the other way around but I'm sawing the tree a bit higher up so it's easier that way. With strong winds you should not do this kind of work under any circumstances. I knock out the wedge with the splitting hammer since it doesn't fall out by itself. From now on we keep the rope slightly taut. And I start the felling cut from the other side. This one is a bit higher than the felling notch. The difference in height of the two cuts is about 8 cm and a felling cut as parallel as possible to the felling notch creates a hinge effect of the remaining trunk between the two cuts. 
I only saw slowly while there's still tension on the rope, so there's no need to use wedges. This way the tree can only fall in the desired direction. I watch the cut, when it starts to open up I take two steps back for safety reasons. The hinge effect of the braking strip also provides more safety for myself because the tree cannot slip off the side of the trunk. Okay, that worked out well and you can see that the tree has already lost several dead branches on impact. I start cutting up the tree because it will still serve as firewood. Then we can already start splitting on site. We use the splitting hammer. The advantage is that the splitting hammer is thicker and does not get stuck in the wood. It weighs more than the axe, which makes splitting even easier. I will link all used tools in the description section. Now I will take a look at the tree stump since it will be cut down to ground level. The roots don't interfere with anything so they can stay here in the ground and rot away. We stack the wood neatly in the fire storage shed where it can dry until it's needed. By the way, you can find a detailed video about the construction of this firewood stand on my channel. With this, the work is completely finished after about 5 hours and I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> Who cuts trees should also plant trees. Here you can find my detailed video about the walnut tree planting. Feel free to visit my channel again. Until then, I wish you good luck with your projects. See you soon, I'm called the Landscape Guy.